Well, hello there, and welcome back to another episode of Geek with Glasses Live. I'm your host, Neil, your Geek with Glasses. And today we're going to be taking a look at Apple's iOS 4.1 update. This was recently released, uh, actually about just a couple hours ago. And uh, if you currently have an iPhone, whether it be a 3G, a 3GS, or an iPhone 4, or an iPod Touch, you're going to definitely want to run over to uh, the closest computer that you have with a copy of iTunes on it and download this update and uh, get it up and running. So far, I'm not seeing any performance degradation whatsoever between iOS 4.01 and 4.1 and this video we're going to just take a quick look at two of the newest features that iOS 4.1 brings to uh, your iDevice. Um, first and foremost, uh, let's just quickly talk about the Game Center. So Game Center is Apple's take on social gaming. If you have a game or if you purchase a game from the App Store that is Game Center enabled, this is going to allow you to do uh, online social gaming or multiplayer gaming, as well as kind of keep track of like achievements and little kind of bonus awards. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with like an Xbox 360 or if you play World of Warcraft or some of the other MMOs, you're kind of used to these new like unlocking achievement type um, roles when you play games and Game Center is going to give you some of those um, some of those achievements and some of those social gaming aspects that we've kind of come familiar with in the last uh, few years in, in gaming. So let's just jump right in here to uh, Game Center. As you can see, um, <clears throat> right now you've got, I've got zero friends, zero games, and zero achievements. And that's just because I just installed this about 20 minutes ago and I wanted to get a quick video out kind of highlighting the HDR feature, which is what the majority of this video is gonna be about. But um, as you can see down here, you've got a friends tab, obviously no friends. You've got a games tab and you've got a request tab for obviously if you uh, send out a request for a friend or, uh, or have some incoming. Um, so if you actually have an iPhone 4, or I'm sorry, if you have an iPhone with 4.1 and you want to do some social gaming, uh, my handle is GWG for Geek With Glasses, or you can actually search for me at uh, geekwglasses at gmail.com. That'll be how you'll search, and you can uh, feel free to add me up and friend me, and we'll do some online gaming. So uh, once I have a few friends, maybe I'll make another video that kind of covers this, but let's jump into the meat and potatoes of today's video, and that's going to be HDR photography. So HDR photography, HDR stands for High Dynamic Range, and basically what that is, it's a trick in the world of photography where you take three exposures of the uh, of an identical scene and each of those exposures one of them is going to be overexposed one of them is going to be underexposed and one of them is going to be a normal exposure and then you kind of mesh those three photos together into a single image that uh, kind of pops with uh, the dynamic contrast because you overexposed it which blew out everything and made things that are normally dark nice and bright. You underexposed it so all of the things that are dark are even darker and bring out even more shadows and then you took a normal uh, photo and when you put the three of those together your dark items are actually lit from the overexposure. Your light items are actually darker because of the underexposure and then it takes that standard photo as well to mesh, uh, to mesh in and uh, give you this really really pretty um, dynamic high contrast pho uh, photography. If you want to know a little bit more about HDR, Google HDR photography, or uh, better yet, hop onto Flickr and just type in HDR and uh, take a look at what you can do with HDR photography and tone mapping. So Apple decided that they were going to bring HDR photography to the iPhone. And uh, the way that you will achieve that now is when you launch your phone, you'll notice right up here you got a little button that says HDR on or HDR off. One of the things that you'll immediately notice is if I have my flash on and I click and it automatically turns HDR off. If I tell HDR on, you'll notice that flash automatically goes off. So you cannot utilize the HDR functionality with the flash on. One other thing if you notice if you put it on the forward facing camera, you don't have the HDR option at all. So that's another thing that's actually been taken away. So let's go ahead and flip back to the main camera. And what this is supposed to do is take three photos in quick succession, one underexposed, one normal exposed, and one overexposed. Now, I'm not necessarily claiming that Apple is lying to us, but I find it very hard to believe that it's actually taking three images um, in the amount of time that it takes to, to shoot these photos. So I'll, I'll, demo, uh, I'll demonstrate that a little bit um, in a moment uh, and, and let you kind of see what I'm talking about. But first, let's actually take a look at a couple of sample photos. So actually, I don't want to start here. Let's go right up here and we'll start. This is a picture of my living room. Now, this is normal 
exposure. This is just the regular photo that I took and I metered and I clicked the button on the window over here. So it kind of took it and darkened the room up so that you could see out that window. Now, if you enable the HDR function, it takes those three photos supposedly and then creates another image. And this is what that image looks like. You'll notice, let's actually turn this sideways here. You'll notice that the image, the original image is kind of dark and shadowy. Um, and that's because the light metering on the wind, the light coming in the window darkens up the rest of the room. Now, if we go over to the HDR version, you'll see that things have been lit up. And so in, in this incidence, the HDR function actually worked pretty well. It looks pretty nice. So let's take a look at a couple other samples. I took a shot of my backyard. This is just looking outside um, out to the trees in the sky in my backyard. This is the original photo and you'll see there's some pretty good blues and the greens are kind of there. Um, not real rich, not real dark, but you know, it's, it's just your standard five megapixel picture. Now we turn HDR on and you'll notice the greens are even lighter and they're more faded and the sky isn't quite as dark of a blue. So it kind of blows out the image and, and washes it out. I wasn't real happy with that. Here's a photo that I took of myself um, standing in light. Uh, I had the sun directly in my face. And as you can tell, uh, I got my eyes closed because it was almost too bright. And you'll notice there's some good color in the green grass over here and the trees are nice and dark and I've got some redness to my face with the sun hitting. And there's, there's overall the colors kind of pop in the image, nice dark blue. So let's take a look at the HDR version of this photo. Not real happy with it at all. It definitely brings out the shadows. If you look back here and you look in these tree areas up here where it's dark, back here where it's shadowed in behind the trees and along the branch here, uh, or the, the ledge, if we go over, those are lightened up a little bit and you can see more contrast and detail. Same with my hair, you can see it's nice and dark here and you get more detail. But one of the things you'll notice is, where'd the green go in the grass? It's completely gone. The sky is nowhere near as blue. Nice dark blue, rich blue, light turquoise. And then look at my skin. I mean, I know I'm a geek and I'm pretty pasty, but if you look at my skin over here, it looks practically washed out and uh, just unbearably blown out. And this, again, my, my, my shirt looks gray here, my Scooby-Doo shirt. You go back here, um, and I'm sorry, it looks gray here and it looks more white here. And the face loses all of its contrast and color. So there's another example of outdoor and highlight. I'm not real happy with the way it works. So let's go to the next shot. This is an indoor shot that I took in my basement without all of that sunlight. This is um, in my office, regular image, HDR image. Again, all those colors and contrasts are completely blown out and you can't really, this is not a good picture. I don't like the way this looks. The original image from the, from the camera worked much better. Um, and then here's another one I just took of my Wii and I metered on the Wii. So this is all nice and dark. This is the original shot. And this actually, in this case, it worked. This is dark. You can't really see the edge of my TV. It kind of meshes with the TV stand and the Wii Resort box It is popping. And it just looks like this abyss in the background. And then you use the HDR and now you can actually see some shadowing and you can tell that there's, this is a wood grain texture. You can see that the TV is here. So in this example, it actually worked. But one of the things that I'm noticing is when you take photos of people, whether it be indoor or outdoor, the HDR photos are washed out and blown out. So to me, it looks like Apple needs to do a little work with HDR. And again, let's, uh, let's go back and just take a quick shot and you'll know what I'm talking about. So it says it's gonna take three consecutive shots. So we're not gonna see much because it's a table and it's really, really close. But we've got HDR turned on right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and take a shot and I want you to watch what happens. It takes one quick image and immediately is saving HDR, which tells me it's not really taking three images. It's taking an image and then processing it to simulate HDR. Um, you can't really tell here, although that does have darker, richer colors than that. That's kind of blown out. I did this on another test where I actually used the camera and I shook it. I was basically, I took an HDR and shook it and um, you don't really see a whole heck of a lot of motion blur in the photo, which again kind of makes me think that HDR may not actually be taking three separate images the way Apple claims. Now I, can't, I could be completely wrong. It could be just taking three images or taking an image and then using a computer to undercompensate or underexpose and then overexpose, which is simulating three images. But uh, so far, I'm not real pleased with HDR photography on the iPhone. I guess I will stick with my Canon uh, T1i for taking true HDR photography and hopefully they'll figure out a way to fix this and make it better. 
uh, for the future if it's possible. Uh, I'm not sure because uh, if you take HDR photography, you got to hold your camera perfectly still because you're taking three images and if you get any kind of movement whatsoever, you get motion blur in those shots. So anyways, this has been Neil, your Geek with Glasses, just taking a quick look at the HDR functionality on iOS 4.1. Hopefully I'll, uh, I'll get a couple of friends that can join me on Game Center and we will uh, take a look and see what Game Center brings uh, to the mix. Again, like I said, I'm not seeing any degradation in performance whatsoever with 4.1, but I did want to talk about that HDR real quick and let you know that uh, I'm not real happy with it. Let me know what you think. If you've got an iPhone, um, 4 or even a 3GS using the HDR functionality, um, shoot me a message or drop me a comment and let me know how you like HDR, whether it's working for you or whether it's not. I'm going to do a little bit more testing and a little bit more playing around and see if I can make it work better. But so far I think Apple has a little work to do to uh, actually come up with some decent HDR photography uh, using this device. So as a photographer, I say HDR on the iPhone, not worth it. Standard images come out better. So thanks again uh, for following me and supporting me. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. That's www.twitter.com slash geekwithglasses. And you can always follow me and fan me up or like me, whatever it is they call it these days on Facebook. And that's facebook.com slash geekwithglasses. And thanks again for watching and leave me some comments. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.